Hey team, welcome back to my channel. In this video, we're going to write a Python program that is like the cat command in Unix. Hope you enjoy this. This version of cat doesn't use any switches, so it's a limited version of this cat command. I still hope you enjoy this. So we just want to take the contents of a file and show it to the screen. That's what we're going to do now. The first thing we need to do is import sys. Sys allows us to use command line arguments. And of course, OS path, we're going to be able to use exist to see if the file really does exist that the user passes to us. Opening files, we always have to know the mode. Notice here, mode, read, write, append, read and write, read binary, write binary. For the cat command, we only need to be able to read the file. I'm going to set mode equals R. Notice the file size of largefile.txt. It's 28 megabytes. I don't want to load all that up into one read and have a variable that's 28 megabytes in size. Let's do this in chunks. What we can say is size equals 64 times 1024. This is a very common number in computer programming. This is 64K. The total number of bytes is 65536. Now that we've defined some stuff that we just need to proceed, we can start looking at our arguments that are going to come into the app. Notice if the length of the arguments is one, pretty much it's just the name of the executable. I'm going to show this person how to use this program. If they tell me it correctly, I'm going to get that file name as arg sub one, and I'm going to put that into the variable file name. Notice when I use the Unix command cat, on the missing file, it comes up with the name of the executable, the file name that I provided, and then a message that says the system cannot find the file specified. Notice that we have that same print statement here if we cannot find that file. Notice on line 16, if that file exists, this is a test, I get that from this line right here. If that's true, I'm going to do something. If I cannot find it, they're going to get this message. The same message that comes from the cat utility. Let's open the file now on line 17. And we're going to use the with clause. The with clause makes sure other things happen. And it is called a context manager. So whenever we open a file, it must be closed. So when we say with open, when we get out of this you know, level of code, it will automatically close for us. Notice I get the file name. I got that from arg v sub one and mode is r for read. And I'll be using the variable f to make this happen. Because the file size is so large, notice 28 megabytes, we can't read all that in at one chunk. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to read it in in 64k blocks and I'm going to put it into chunk. We are going to stay inside of this while loop until chunk size is zero. As long as it's greater than zero, that means I have more text to keep reading and I will stay inside of this loop. When I'm done, it will break out of this width and it will automatically close that file. Show messages. If they don't pass me no file name, I want to show them how to use the program. Now define show message. I'm going to pass in the file name and then I'm going to say, how to use this program and then I'm going to say you got to use it like this Python the name of the executable and then the input file name and then I'm going to exit this program now we can run it on our first run we say Python cat dot pi file name dot txt notice it's a little dinky file of 64 bytes notice we get Sunday through Saturday and now we're going to do the large file of 28 megs the last line should say software nuggets. Let's execute this. And there it goes, getting 65, 536 bytes at a time, AKA 64K. We're all done. Software nuggets was the last line in that file. And there you have the most basic version of CAT, pretty much CAT I've ever seen. The CAT in Unix has several switches. This version does not support. However, the goal of this video was to show you how to do some file IO. And I believe I accomplished that. Now, I may in the future write more switches and show you how to do that as well. But maybe you take the code from here and you do it. You kick it up a notch. That would be pretty cool. So this is the end of this video. I appreciate your support and I'll see you back in my next video. Have a good week.